You walk up to him with most of your nerves calmed, but still as paranoid as ever. Normally, you would never agree to meet in this place, under these circumstances, but normal was a long time ago. This was all that could be done, needed to be done. You think of all the people who made the journey with you, and where they are now. Several of them probably wish they could swap places. As you walk into the building, you see a shadow shift slightly to the left. Unsure if it's yours, you pause and frantically look around, worried that someone else is watching. You've had this feeling before, but you chalk it up to paranoia, as usual. You resume your regularly scheduled existence and continue through the winding maze of hallways. He stands at the end of a hallway, looking bored and holding a bag. It looks almost weightless in his hands, as per usual. Even though you've known him for a long time, you've never seen his face. He's always dressed in black from head to toe, his face disappearing in the shadows of his hood. You've known him since the end of the world, which was so long ago you don't remember how it happened, but the nightmares still haunt you from time to time. Flashbacks of a building collapsing, burning, radiating a blinding orange light. As you approach him, he looks up from his phone. It's surprising that he has one, but then again, he did get you the bag. The phone was probably government approved anyway. He nods at you and hands you the bag without a word. It's full to the point of almost bursting with color. The cloth inside is plentiful and contrasts well with the communist gray hallways. You turn to him to say thank you, but he's already gone, melted into the shadows. It's probably for the best. If you were caught, they wouldn't be able to get any useful information from you about him. They're probably already looking for him anyway. Again, you see a shadow shift in the darkness, but this time you didn't move. He was supposed to be long gone. Who was moving? Then came the footsteps, starting off as quiet as a mote of dust falling to the floor, becoming as loud as a drumbeat. You turned your flashlight off, but you weren't fast enough. You run down the hallway, but it doesn't seem to end. You hear their footsteps getting louder behind you. The cold sweat on the back of your neck freezes as you hear their raspy exhale. A knife cuts deep into your arm, but the pain is overwhelmed by the beating of your heart. The blood is coming out faster than you thought it would. You see the exit just a few steps away. You reach out to grab the door handle and pull it open. They stand there, ready. Your heart skips a beat and the pain flows back. Stabbing feels painful at first, but slowly becomes numb. It feels slightly relaxing, as if you were getting a massage. As if they were there just to make you feel good. You feel bullets going into your skull. It's funny, you think, that they wasted bullets, of which there was supposedly a shortage. Fuck this. You won't. You can't go out this way. You pull out the handgun that they hadn't found. Six bullets, six of them. It feels like time slows down as you turn. One by one, they slump on the ground, slowly breathing out their last breath. You hope the others have fun cleaning the blood and bodies of their friends off the lawn. It was cold enough that most of your stab wounds had crusted over immediately, stopping the bleeding. You could still feel the bullets in your skull, but the adrenaline was pumping fast enough that it didn't matter. As you look back at the building, you realize it looks too good for all the things it's done, all the things it's fostered. Ironically, lighting the fire was the hard part. You found an old matchbox in the pockets of one of the soldiers. The building was already a tinderbox. As the flames licked the edge of the matchstick, near where your hands are, you touch it to the building. The flames start crawling along the outside, like bright orange ants. Soon, it's engulfed in flames. You see the building collapsing, burning, radiating a blinding orange light. You stand there, watching their world burn. You can feel the smoke entering your lungs, but don't realize it. You collapse on the floor, seeing double. 
Everything seems like a blur as the world spins around you. It keeps spinning, slowly becoming watercolors, slowly seeping away until all that remains is black. Even the black eventually fades into nothingness. All that's left is you and your feelings of desperation, but even those fade away. You feel yourself fall over, but you aren't awake for when you hit the ground. And then you wake up. Well, this video was not very upbeat. I don't really plan to make stuff like this in the future. I mean, if you guys like it, give it a like. But if you didn't like it, don't worry. I'm not always doom and gloom, and you should check out some of my shorts that will be on the side of the screen now. Anyways, thank you. Subscribe. Goodbye.